Good afternoon and welcome to our latest IEDC webinar on championing economic development and the 2019 Economic Development Week. We have a lot of ground to cover in our webinar today, but first a few housekeeping notes. All attendees are in listen-only mode. This webinar is being recorded for further distribution. Please ask questions utilizing the questions box in your GoToWebinar dashboard. We will answer questions at the conclusion of our presentations, but we encourage you to type in your questions at any point during the webinar. All presentations will be made available to attendees after completing a survey about today's webinar. Please watch your email for the survey in the 24 hours immediately following the webinar. I'll now welcome Jeff Finkel, President and CEO of IEDC, to share a few words about IEDC and to introduce Craig Richard, the immediate past chair of IEDC's Board of Directors and our first speaker today. Jeff? I want to welcome everybody today to this webinar. Um, unfortunately, um, we're uh, referring to this as our snake bit webinar because we uh, did have uh, one attempt at doing this a couple weeks ago, and then many of you may have realized that we sent out an erroneous email yesterday, or at least an erroneous headline, and we apologize for that. What we're going to do today is we're going to cover uh, a couple uh, things. We're going to talk about Economic Development Week, but we're also going to talk about uh, a new report called uh, Champion Economic Development. As uh, many of you who are IDC members are aware, uh, or may be aware, that our chair gets to uh, help uh, direct the organization on a particular topic during the course of a year. Craig Richard, who will uh, speak after I'm done here, uh, chose the, the notion that economic development uh, and oftentimes needs a political boost a public relations boost, uh, and that there are some people that aren't as uh, supportive as that of economic development as we would like. So we engaged on a project called Champion Economic Development, and that was uh, Craig's um, interest and issue of the year. By the way, uh, Tracy McDaniel, who is on, uh, will speak a little later in this call, uh, we're going to be using uh, her issue of the year is corporate engagement, and we are already starting to work on that topic as well. Um, if you don't know Craig, Craig heads up uh, the Tampa Hillsboro uh, Partnership or Economic Development uh, Council. He has served in economic development roles in Texas, Kentucky, um, uh, Georgia, and uh, and was educated in the state of Virginia in this uh, uh, profession. Uh, Craig, if you would take it from here, that would be awesome. All right, thank you, Jeff. And uh, thank you all for tuning in. You know, this is a, a pretty relevant topic uh, nowadays. And so what I wanna do is just give you a brief overview and some history or context as to how this came about and uh, particularly from the, my position as a chair, but also my position as uh, uh, someone that leads an economic development organization that is facing these challenges every day. Um, if you've been in this, or in this profession any number of years, you've probably noticed a shift in the terms of how the public and elected officials and community leaders are describing economic development. Um, and what I've seen is a, a shift in the sentiment about it. If you think about, you know, just a few years ago, everybody, and I mean everybody in terms of elected officials and community leaders, were using the term economic development very favorably. I mean, there was uh, quite a bit of pride in the fact that people um, campaigned on economic development to help their local communities to to find good jobs and to build prosperity within their community. Um, but today, if you listen to you know elected officials and look at some of the headlines, you've noticed a shift in some of that uh, thinking and the way that economic development is being described. You'll hear terms like 
um, economic development is picking winners and losers. You'll hear, you know, community leaders bashing economic development and talking about how there's no transparency or um, that, you know, we shouldn't support corporate welfare and things like that. So it's a narrative that has become pretty toxic today. And I thought, you know, as when I was serving as chair last year, that it would be good for our organization to arm economic development professionals to to be prepared to to speak the same language and have the same type of talking points when describing and championing economic development. You know, and this this hit home hard just over the past year or so in here in Florida. Um, we had a speaker of the house that came in and just started gutting. Uh, state economic development programs, and um, and soon uh, it it became um, it became the target for a lot of local economic developers to start attacking local economic development programs, and so it became really real in a hurry that you know we needed to do something uh, about this, and so um, last year. Um, as when I was a chair, I had an opportunity to serve as a, a panelist on an EDRP uh, strategic planning retreat, and and um, and and on that panel was Birgit Kloss out of Michigan, uh, and we were both, you know, commiserating about how our respective states are are taking on this this new negative slant about economic development. And um, we thought, you know, this would be a good opportunity to really start, you know, giving this a more higher profile uh, conversation within uh, within our profession and, and particularly IEDC. And so uh, from that, the EDRP decided that uh, they were going to take this on as a project and, and create a white paper. And uh, I'm pleased to say that um, they completed the white paper. Uh, and launched it at the Leadership Summit in Fort Lauderdale just a couple of months ago. And uh, part of that launch, of course, Bergen and I did a, uh, a bit of a presentation of, about this very same topic. And, um, you know, I think what we've heard from that is that economic developers wanted an opportunity to hear about how we can position uh, this topic in a more favorable light and not let it just center upon, you know, a narrative that uh, a new ideology has taken on. And so we started talking about how we're not just uh, incentives. Economic development is more than that. We're about economic inclusion. We're about talent development and placemaking. And more importantly, we need to go on the offense to spread this message because as soon as we stop thinking about uh, or not prepared to defend economic development, you know, we basically uh, start explaining and then you're on the defense and then you're losing. So we needed to arm our fellow professionals with some information that's going to help them tell a more complete story about economic development. So I just want to thank um, the economic development research partners and uh, Swati Ghosh with IEDC staff and, and Jeff and the whole staff in making this a priority um, for IEDC. I think it's going to be very beneficial for professionals all over the country um, as they face these types of issues both locally on the state level and even nationally in some respects. So with that, uh, I want to again thank you all uh, for being here, being a part of this conversation and look forward to the rest of the webinar. All right, thank you very much, Craig, for your leadership on this important topic and for sharing your thoughts with us today. Our next speaker is Swati Ghosh, Senior Director of Research at IADC and one of the primary authors of the most recent EDR report on championing economic development. Swati, you wanna take it away? Sure, thanks, Matt. Um, and thank you all for joining us. I'm going to quickly go over um, some of the main features of the report and the project here um, and make note that some of the things um, are still under progress. 
uh, the paper comes with a toolkit, and parts of that toolkit are still being developed and will be launched during ED Week, um, as well as the um, 2019 Federal Forum um, here in Washington, D.C. in a few weeks. Um, So we go over uh, the methodology, the main findings uh, from our research, uh, the recommendations, toolkit, um, and what is coming. Um, I won't go over the slide uh, a lot. Craig touched on a number of the issues that are coming um, or making headlines and uh, the reason why EDRP chose this topic or was put um, to us as a focus. Um, the methodology here, it was um, a unique project for EDRP in some ways that we had not just EDRP members, but also board members that were part of a task force um, that guided staff in the development of the research and the project. Um, we also did a lot of data collection um, and interviews from throughout the membership through focus groups, um, through interviews with economic development leaders, as well as a membership survey that was done in the summer of 2018 to gather thoughts um, and ideas, as well as input from our membership um, on what they are seeing, what issues they're facing, and strategies and tools that they have been using and find successful in um, combating um, some of these negative ish, um, rhetoric that's coming towards, uh, towards economic development. Uh, the outcome is uh, the paper, the toolkit, a bunch of videos and brochures, and like I said, um, some of these outputs are still under progress. Um, from the research, we found that um, the common challenges that we face um, are a lot of misunderstanding of what is economic development, um, as well as what an economic development organization does. Uh, a big chunk was also in relation to transparency and accountability. Um, and then the last category was ideological opposition. Um, what we found is that we Given how uh, public the work is that economic developers do, uh, there will always be ideological opposition and there is nothing that um, we can do about it. Um, but what would be the low hanging fruit for economic development organizations would be to deal with the misunderstanding um, that exists around economic development and showcase um, examples and provide tools to uh, on how to dispel those myths about economic development and that's what this project was about. Um, I mentioned the survey a little bit earlier. Um, one statistic that caught our eye from that was about a third of our members who responded to the survey said that they had faced some kind of pu public opposition to their work during the past two to five years. This was a survey um, with over 400 responses. So that's still a significant number of people um, facing public opposition. <clears throat> the main findings from um, our research were uh, that economic developers could do a better job. There's a lot of room for improvement under three categories, communications, engaging with stakeholders, and partnering. Um, this is not to say that these challenges are universal um, or these are gaps that are across the board. But again, going back to the misconception, um, misconceptions around economic development and um, a number of them that could be stemming from these issues. Um, regarding communication, um, we heard a lot of times that economic developers do a fantastic job of marketing their own communities, uh, but they haven't paid enough attention to market themselves and the profession on what they do, um, why they do it, the way they do it, what the profession is about, et cetera. So we can do a better job of communicating that. Um, in terms of engaging with stakeholders, um, 
it's from a transparency and accountability perspective and can we do a better job of listening to our stakeholders early enough in the process so that a, a fair process can be designed in a way that addresses their concerns and take their concerns into um, consideration for make, while making the deal. Um, and <clears throat> uh, partnering with organizations in the community um, is about expanding our reach and having allies that um, can go to bat for us as well as help us expand our reach um, and impact of work. The recommendations, uh, there are five recommendations coming out from the report. Um, do good work. There is never a shortcut for good work. Um, it's all the stuff that professional economic developers talk about, strategic planning, careful execution, measuring results, and communicating those results um, before uh, the cycle starts again. Listen, engage, and adapt. And we realize that this is much easier said than done, and a lot depends on the organizational leadership to be able to discern when to act on a certain type of feedback um, that you may have received and when to defend your practices or your organization or the project or whatever ha you have. Um, but the more important message here is to have the mechanisms in place to receive feedback and truly engage with your stakeholders um, at different levels of the project. Um, next is make transparency a core tenet of your work. Um, and this is the one that's a really nuanced discussion. In the report, we talk about um, you know, the strong arguments on both sides and why um, the need for transparency and why there is a need for confidentiality in the process. Um, but again, the main message here is that communities should try to be as transparent as possible. Um, and when they cannot share certain types of information or at certain points of the process, then they should uh, make sure to communicate this to their stakeholders, uh, which gets us to the next one, which is communicate and connect. Um, I, I've said this a few times already that, you know, that this whole project, uh, if there was one theme around it, it was communication. And um, economic development organizations and economic developers can do a better job of um, communicating. There are lots of tools in the toolkit um, that can help provide different ideas on types of audience, types of communication strategies, types of media that um, the various communication mes messages can be put out. So. Um, Basically, how do you better communicate um, your value to your stakeholders? Um, and the last one is build and enlist allies. Um, it is often said that economic development is a team sport. And so when we uh, build partnerships and build allies in the community, um, we expand our reach. And also, hopefully, we are being um, equally good partners to, our, uh, to other organizations in the community to help them get their work done better um, as well. The toolkit itself um, has a number of brochures. Uh, these are two examples that are on there right now, and there are more that are in development. The left one is, uh, what is economic development? Um, a two-page foldout on um, different topics within economic development that can be downloaded and printed and handed over to elected officials, media, uh, other community organizations. Uh, the one on the right is more about um, different economic development programs having, helping different um, groups um, and how do they help, kind of who and how um, economic development programs help. Um, the toolkit also has um, video interviews. There are two that are on our website. Um, right now of Craig, and uh, there are more that are in the works and coming. Um, case studies on different types of strategies that work, uh, communication pieces, uh, like I said, um, different success stories, newsletters, op-eds, blogs, um, and when to use different types of pieces 
with what types of audience. Um, and technical aid, uh, there is a presentation we are putting together that uh, members should be able to use if they go to meet with their elected officials or partners, kind of like an ED 101, um, a really high level overview of what economic development organizations in general do. Um, and then a few other examples of how um, specific organizations talk about the work that they do, um, if it's site selection or helping existing businesses, um, that can be adapted to a community. Um, and yeah, the next, the what we're working on currently, like I said, is more videos. Um, we in fact uh, have a call out uh, that was sent out in our newsletter last yesterday um, about if you have elevator speeches, uh, we're collecting those. And um, we put that in a compilation. What do you tell a stranger in 30 seconds about economic development? So um, you can go on our um, website on the ED Now page um, to get more information about it um, if you want to send in your entry for that. Um, any other um, more brochures and presentation decks coming. And there will also be um, an additional research paper coming out in early 2020 uh, that talks about the value addition of economic development. So um, staying with that theme there. Over to you, Matt. All right. Well, thank you very much, Swati, for sharing uh, some insights into the report. Uh, and it's, it's exciting to see that there, there's more uh, more to come, and so I encourage everyone to stay tuned uh, to this uh, ongoing project. Uh, the report that you've just heard about is available for free download for IEDC members on our website. Non-members may purchase the report online as well, though we encourage you to consider joining IEDC and take advantage of this and many other benefits of membership. As a reminder, uh, please type in any questions you'd like to ask our speakers using the questions box in your GoToWebinar dashboard at any point during the webinar. We'll answer your questions at the conclusion of our presentations. Uh, and now I'd like to, to kick it back to Jeff to introduce our next speaker. Thank you, Matt. Um, we're very lucky to have uh, Tracy McDaniel. Um, on the phone with us today. Tracy uh, uh, has been on the IEDC board for several years. Um, Tracy's uh, career uh, has been mostly in Texas and uh, the tourism world, the economic development world, um, Greater Houston Partnership, the state of Texas. Um, took a detour to the uh, East Coast and headed up uh, Choose New Jersey, who was, uh, which was uh, New Jersey's economic development efforts, returned to Texas, uh, worked for the state of Texas and their public-private partnership, and is now uh, the president of TIP Strategies, an economic development consulting firm in Austin. Uh, uh, Tracy brings a lot of dynamism uh, to the role as chair. And Tracy, do you want to kick off our discussion on Economic Development Week? Absolutely. Thanks, Jeff. Well, the whole purpose of this part of the webinar is to provide tools and uh, for you and uh, information on how to engage and promote economic development in our communities. And in 2019, Economic Development Week will be May 6th through 11th. And this is our third annual Economic Development Week for IEDC. In 2019, uh, we will take place at, at a really important showcase of our communities and how we describe and talk about the value of economic development through our throughout our communities. And I think this ties directly into Craig's effort and EDRP's effort in championing economic development around the country. It allows us to talk about the impact that our programs have in creating jobs, advancing career development, and opportunities to improve 
quality of place in our communities. More than 450 campaigns have been created throughout the United States and Canada since we launched Economic Development Week in 2016. The goals of Economic Development Week is to articulate, organize, show and tell, and amplify the message and the impact of the work we do in our communities each and every day. And we'll give you some examples on how you can do that at a local level. There are several ways to get involved. Uh, and we're going to highlight at least four steps to generate ideas for you today. The first is to build a hype. You can write a column, uh, a letter to the editor, get information out, uh, via press release to tell the story of what's happening in your local community. You can send out promotional materials that will help tell the story. You can also engage your board and community thought leaders to tell their stories of why they're in your communities and they continue to stay there. IEDC will provide examples throughout the week of ideas that you can share, best practices that have been used via social media posts, and just ways that you could spread uh, the ideas and get the message out about your community. The second step is to generate a digital footprint. You know, there's no better way to get your message out than the use of social media. Uh, using photos, videos, gamify your Economic Development Week in 2019 by engaging your community in competitive activities. Uh, you can also get your local elected officials engaged by proclamations and, and, and really creating opportunities uh, to tell the story of what you do. Uh, IEDC has created uh, tags that you'll be able to use and feature in your social media challenge uh, channels throughout that week. The third step is to fill your calendar. Uh, there are several activities you can uh, have to do that. You can hold an open house. You can get support of your uh, local officials uh, through the proclamations and ceremonies. You can also tie in your local businesses and government agencies, stakeholders, and get them to participate in activities that could really tell the story of what happens each and every day and all the good work that we know we do in our communities. And the fourth step is to educate the public. There is a, a, a real need for us to tell our own story and not have that cast for us. So we can create opportunities for communities to engage directly with the EDOs and officials asking questions about the local role of economic developers. There's also an opportunity to have uh, the local community and the public have a day in the life of an economic developer being transparent, sharing information, uh, exactly how we do what we do to engage community members and citizens throughout. IEDC will provide resources to EDOs uh, via the report that we talked about earlier, Champion Economic Development. Uh, also, in 2019, the Economic Development Week, the toolkit will be available for you to use. Sample press releases, social media posts, pro promotional materials and proclamations, all those samples will be available for members uh, to use as you come up with great ideas to really showcase the work you do throughout that week. And also in mid-April, IEDC will launch a website that will give you even more resources and help spotlight some of the stories during Economic Development Week. And I really want you to, and encourage each of you to enter the 2019 Excellence in Economic Development Awards for the Innovation in Economic Development Week category. This will allow you to really showcase some of your innovation during the week. The types of promotions will include events, seminars, marketing tools, websites, any promotionals or videos or digital campaigns that you were able to execute. 
Applications are due on May 31st of 2019, and the award winners will be recognized at the 2019 IEDC Annual Conference in Indianapolis in October. So we look forward and encourage each of you to participate in this award. And lastly, IEDC wants to encourage everyone to put a spotlight on all of the good work that we do in our communities. Don't be shy, be aggressive in telling your story and the impact of the work that you have and do each and every day. Thank you. I'll turn it back over to you, Matt and Jeff. All right, thank you very much, Tracy, uh, for helping us to get the word out on Economic Development Week, which again is taking place May 6th through May 11th. Lots of good things to work on to ensure that your communities are celebrating in style. Uh, we'll now begin our Q&A. Uh, please type in any questions you have in the questions box on your GoToWebinar dashboard. And go ahead, Jeff. Uh, so I'm going to go through uh, some of the answers here. Uh, can the slides be sent uh, following the sem uh, webinar? The answer is correct. We will uh, be happy to forward them to uh, everyone who's on here. Have you seen the economic development video that Toronto has done? Could IEDC do something like that? Uh, William Mann, I'm not sure what Toronto has done. However, IEDC uh, did collaborate with the Ontario Economic Developers Association, the Economic Developers Association of Canada, the Economic Developers Association of Alberta, the Economic Developers Association of British Columbia, and the Saskatchewan Economic Developers Association, and paid for a video. If we are talking the same video, which we may not be, um, we have shown that at a couple of our events. Uh, it is on our YouTube channel, uh, and uh, I, it, is it on our website? Uh, I would just wrote an email to uh, Matt yesterday morning to ask if it was on our website. Do we know precisely where yeah, it is? It's on the Championing Economic Development under About IEDC. Under About IEDC, Championing Economic Development, you will see uh, the video that I am referring to. Canadian and the and, uh, US. Um, many in the, in the business uh, community do not know what economic development is, does. Uh, the campaign toolkit cover how to build, help business owners and entrepreneurs better understand the basics of economic development. Um, a little. Uh, now, the, the economic development video that IEDC has on its website could be helpful in that, and do we have the Indiana web uh, video on there as well? We will add another video uh, to the website. Uh, th there are three communities in Indiana that put together, um, and they call their economic development organizations in Indiana LIDOs, uh, local economic development organizations. Um, it, it is not perfect, but it's an awfully thoughtful uh, video that I think that we will try to uh, readapt in some place. It focuses on economic development as a marketing organization as opposed to business retention and entrepreneurship as well. Uh, but between the two videos that we're talking about, it would uh, be helpful, I think, in educating your business community. Uh, we also have a guidebook uh, what do we call it? What is economic development? Uh, are you talking about the blue book? Or the blue book. Yeah. Um, and, and that could be helpful uh, to you and your community as well. Swati wants to add to what I'm uh, talking about here. And um, we are developing a slide deck uh, that can serve as an economic development 101, uh, a brief presentation that you can send to elected officials, to business owners, um, any community organizations uh, or community members um, that you want to talk to about um, economic development, what it does, uh, and what economic development organizations and economic developers do. And, and that will go up on our website um, between Fed Forum and um, EV Week. Great. Any, any chance? 
I'm. Um, yeah, so uh, uh, answering a question about uh, the, the toolkit availability, uh, the toolkit is actually available now, not yet, very soon. Uh, it's in its final draft version, and we're just waiting on some technical aspects. Uh, expect that to get pushed out over social media this week um, so that you'll be able to, to pull out from that and access uh, most of the resources that Tracy referenced uh, ahead of the actual website going live. Uh, William, uh, uh, Economic Development Matters, we helped pay for, uh, and uh, there are two, there are three versions of it. There, um, and for those of you who know your geography, you will note that most of the filming was done in Calgary. Uh, there is a Canadian version uh, in English. There's a Canadian version in French. And there is an American version uh, that takes out some of the Canadian references. So there are uh, three different versions of that. Um, I um, and you're exactly right. We actually think uh, we actually think that video is quite well done. But and we would encourage all of our members to download it and use it at any uh, opportunity. Uh, that you get a chance to use it for. Uh, the link to the U.S. version will, when we send out the uh, video clips uh, or the, uh, uh, the presentation, we will send that link uh, with it. But I'm glad you liked it. Uh, we like it as well. Uh, when we, uh, this, is a, this is a good question. Uh, we will distribute the toolkit um, link with the presentations for uh, this webinar. So when you complete the survey for this, we will have uh, the, the toolkit PDF attached to that as well. Uh, and Lisa, uh, this will go out to more than just people on this list. We are uh, we we use our email database uh, quite aggressively, as you all realize. And so uh, uh, we'll get uh, this sent out to all of our members, uh, and if you're I, uh, and uh, the non-members who uh, uh, who we uh, communicate with as well. Um, can I uh, uh, suggest that maybe Craig? Do you have anything you want to add to uh, to what we've been talking about here from our end? No, thanks, Jeff. No, I just want to reiterate how uh, helpful this type of information is for all of our uh, ED professionals, no matter what type of economic development organization you're in. Because I know that was one of the challenges in, in developing a toolkit is because we all represent different types of economic development organizations. Some are within the mayor's office, some are within the county, or some are public-private organizations, some are more marketing-centric. Uh, but nevertheless, the, the challenge was to try to develop something that was a common thread for everyone. And so uh, I'm, I'm really pleased that, you know, we've taken this on and developing the types of resources that could be very uh, beneficial for everybody to, to help create that, that uh, more uniform and consistent narrative about what economic development means and, and is. And um, I'm going to turn this over to Tracy in a second, but Jennifer, as you're trying to think about how do you uh, get the business community to understand economic development, Economic Development Week just gives you an amazing opportunity uh, to help educate your greater community on what, what it is that you do. Press releases, press events, rotary speeches, Chamber of Commerce events, uh, all are things that you can do during Economic Development Week. The mayor's resolutions, uh, resolutions from city councils, et cetera. Um, and by the way, many of those things are on our Economic Development Week page because uh, we actually uh, wrote a bunch of draft uh, resolutions for communities to consider the first year that we did this, um, they all give you an opportunity to help educate the balance of your community. Tracy, would you like to add some other thoughts from what you've heard so far or? Uh, um, 
um, yeah. on Economic Development Week or the, what we we're talking about? Sure. Um, I think you're right, uh, Jeff. I think this is an opportunity. We have 52 weeks out of a year and we're taking one and using it as an opportunity to really spotlight and amplify the good work we do in communities each and every day. And I think this is an opportunity where we can be aggressive about it and uh, and really make a point to say that economic development does matter in our communities. And we all work hard with our partners and stakeholders and business leaders to make that happen. Here's an opportunity for you to use the tools that IEDC provides to engage community leaders, stakeholders, and business leaders to help you tell that story. And I would encourage you all to do it. So Rich, I'm uh, seeing your question about metrics. Uh, you know, uh, we, we've got a major report uh, on our website about metrics uh, and, and it, I was having this debate with a couple people yesterday. What are the metrics that we should be using these days? Well, clearly uh, unemployment is a, is a major metric. Uh, a second metric is income growth. A third metric is capital investment. How much of your capital investment uh, grown during a, a particular period of time? And I guess the last one that we hear about are uh, tax collections, particularly if you work for a city manager or a city where they're looking at the bottom line on a regular basis. You know, we may be as economic developers uh, held to uh, for uh, judged on all four of those. Some people say that uh, job growth or unemployment rate or is passe. I don't tend to believe that because that's uh, uh, politicians still want to know that there are a lot of jobs and that there are more businesses growing more jobs. Greater capital investment, however, oftentimes has fewer jobs but higher paying jobs. Um, let me uh, suggest that I also get an answer from this from uh, Craig and Tracy and, and give, uh, give them to give us their thoughts on what are the metrics that they are using or have seen used the most. Craig, do you want to uh, take a shot at this? Yeah, sure. I'm I'm more in the traditional camp uh, because uh, the type of organization that we're in, uh, we're a business-led economic development organization, economic development corporation, and business leaders understand, I guess, more transactional types of metrics. Uh, they want to know about the number of uh, businesses that you know we assisted in announcing here. They want to know the number of leads that we've generated, the, the number of jobs that have um, resulted in some of those announcements, as well as uh, more quality of life metrics like, you know, the wages that they produce and, um, and the capital investment that it produces. Now, so there's a set of metrics that are like directly involved in what the organization's output is, but we also provide more um, macro level uh, metrics that you know we have to make sure people understand that these are uh, metrics that everyone um, can understand but they're not necessarily correlated to all the results that we produce but when you look at household incomes and poverty rates and uh, educational attainment and things like that these are all kind of community-led metrics that, um, you know, I, I think the community is more interested in, and we try to build, you know, the case that, you know, what we do impacts this, but we're not in a position to say by how much or a percentage or any of that kind of stuff, but it's just, it's helpful to see it in contrast with uh, the actual direct results that we provide. Uh, Tracy, do you mind, uh taking a, uh, uh, a shot at this one as well, please? Sure. You know, I think there's a lot of things that are being used now that are 
uh, a little untraditional uh, uh, because I wholeheartedly believe in the foundation of the metrics that Craig talked about. But today you see people trying to get a grasp of their community and look at how they can be more inclusive in uh, engaging everyone and understanding their communities more. Uh, recently, we've seen um, metrics that fall in line with looking at uh, auto loan delinquency, and that's non-traditional, but it gives you a snapshot of your community in a way that you could start looking at it in a more inclusive way. And uh, there's also student loan. It falls in the same line, healthcare delinquency. So there are a lot of opportunities out there to take a look and understand your community and be able to translate that in a way where you can have a stronger impact and be more inclusive when it comes to strategies and approaches for inclusive economic development. I also would bring in uh, in the discussion social media. You can't forget about the level of engagement that you could have there by either informing your community of activities that are going on and telling your story. This goes back to telling the story and understanding uh, how you push that information out to the community about either talent or workforce development or either job creations and project activity, just so you have a more transparent uh, playing field, if you will, where people know exactly who you are and what you do and the impact you have on communities. Great. So we're going to do, I, I don't see any more questions, so we're going to do a round robin. Um, We'll have uh, Swati uh, if, ask her if she has any final thoughts. We'll go to Craig, and then we'll close it out with Tracy. Uh, Swati, do you have any final thoughts? Um, well, I would say uh, I'll encourage everyone to um, go to the website, download the report. Uh, let us know what you think about it. Um, if you have any ideas on tools, um, samples that would be helpful to you, we are um, all ears. And um, I'll say if you have any interesting ideas on the elevator speeches, then um, send us in your videos. And thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Swati. Craig, any final thoughts? No, I think for this to be successful for everyone is that, you know, we continue to build this library of tools that uh, more and more economic development professionals can use. And uh, again, you know, this repository of a website that uh, IADC has created is the beginning. And I think the way that we can get the most value out of it is if everyone participates. If you have a economic development boot camp and uh, you'd like to share the agenda or a PowerPoint or a video that was created, you know, the more of these things that we can uh, have access to, I think the, the more beneficial it could be for, for everyone. So again, I want to Thank IEDC for uh, for taking this on. Thank uh, all of you for tuning in. But um, this is a very worthwhile uh, project, and I, I truly appreciate the, the effort that went into it. And Tracy, you have the final word. Use your IEDC team. We have a wealth of knowledge in the team that we have in our association, and they are there and stand ready to help provide best practices, some of the tools that are available, for you to not only share your in innovation, but also have a look at what your peers are doing throughout the country. Uh, so use the team, they're there for you, and uh, thank you all for participating. All right, our, our webinar program continues later this week with another free webinar on Thursday, this one featuring our friends from Townfolio. There's still plenty of time to register by visiting IEDC's website. And later this month, we'll be addressing the hot topic of opportunity zones on the next webinar in our 2019 series. This webinar taking place March 21st. Uh, we'll be talking about these and many more issues during our 2019 Fed Forum taking place April 14th through the 16th. Register by March 21st to save on registration fees. And finally, don't forget to complete the survey regarding this webinar that will be sent out in the next 24 hours. The presentations can be downloaded at the end of the survey, as well as the Economic Development Week Toolkit. Uh, thank you to all of our speakers, Jeff, Craig, Tracy, and Swati. 
Uh, have a wonderful day.